I like the dark. It's friendly. Hello and welcome back to my channel, Box Office Poison. My name is Moxie McMurder and it's the most wonderful time of the year. Yes, the spooky season is here, Halloween is nearly upon us, and it will surprise no one when I say that Halloween is my favourite time of year. I had a bunch of ideas for videos to make about certain films that I love to watch at this time of year, but considering I watch a lot of horror all year round, I thought I'd do something a little different. I have all year to talk to you about horror, so I decided to talk to you about some of my favourite Halloween episodes of TV that I watch every year. Now I'm not about to tell you that some of these are the greatest episodes of television ever made, but these are some of my favourites, and so without further ado, let's get into it. When it comes to spooky TV at Halloween, you are spoiled for choice. There's American Horror Story, and Masters of Horror, and Tales from the Crypt, and The Simpsons Treehouse of Horror, and all of these are great choices for this time of year, but the episodes I'm about to talk about are more of a cosy, comfort TV watch. There's a certain charm about a Halloween special or a Halloween themed episode, especially one I remember watching as a kid. So the first episode I want to highlight is the episode Halloween from Season 2 of King of the Hill. Junie Harper, a conservative church member, declares that Halloween is a satanic holiday and gets the school to shut down Hank's haunted house. She influences Bobby and Luann into believing that Halloween is evil and Hank won't stand for it. This is such a good episode and it always sticks in my mind due to Hank's memories of his own childhood Halloween uh, that's accompanied by a music clip that some folk might recognise as the Linus and Lucy theme from various Charlie Brown cartoons. It's a really sweet episode and like I say, it's one that I watch every year. Next up, Community. I love Community and they actually have four Halloween episodes and I like all of them. I really get the feeling that the people who work on the show, from the writers to the prop masters, are fans of Halloween. And something that they did that will always endear the show to me is that they went all out for their Halloween episode titles. Seriously, add a cobweb and a witch cackle and I'm delighted. Introduction to Statistics from Season 1 has Annie hosting a Day of the Dead party and Jeff abandons the party to go hit on his professor. This episode has Abed dressed as Batman for the first time and has some great standalone moments like Pierce dressed as the Beastmaster having a bad trip. But the episode Epidemiology from season two trumps it. The budget for Epidemiology is obviously a bit bigger than the year before and you can see that reflected in the props and the costumes. The episode is a zombie outbreak parody that takes place during a Halloween party and it's so much fun. There are so many great lines that I still quote all the time and it's a perfect example of an episode of Community. Horror Fiction in Seven Spooky Steps from season three is another great Halloween episode. Britta gives the rest of the study group personality tests and is disturbed to find that one of them could be a homicidal maniac. Eagle-eyed viewers will be rewarded with a brief shot of Beetlejuice walking past the window as his name is said for the third time in the series. And it also has the use of Daybreak, a little tune that Abed hums during his spooky story, which would become a running joke throughout the series. I love each of the stories they tell, from urban legend, gothic romance, and some very strange sci-fi. It just all works really well. Paranormal Parentage from season four is the last Halloween episode. The study group, except for Pierce, are invited to Vicky's Halloween costume party, but they end up going to Pierce's mansion after he gets locked in the panic room and they discover some ghostly goings on. Season 4 of Community is widely regarded as the worst season, and for good reason, but there are some good episodes tucked away in that season, and this is one of them. There are some great moments with the group wandering around the mansion and their reactions to Pierce's home, as well as a brilliant moment with Britta and Jeff talking about his relationship with his father. 
It's a great example of a Halloween episode, and I genuinely love how much effort they went to in creating Pierce's mansion for the episode. Who doesn't love Frasier? I mean, seriously, everything about it is just so damn good. <laughs> it's one of my all-time favourite TV shows, and there are three Halloween episodes throughout the series. The first Halloween episode is from season five, and it's a good episode. Roz thinks she might be pregnant and is waiting to hear from her doctor to confirm. Niles is hosting a Halloween fancy dress party, and after some crossed wires, thinks that it's Daphne who might be pregnant, and that Frasier is the father. There's the episode Tales from the Crypt from season 10, where Frasier is drawn into a prank war with Bulldog, and it's a good episode, but it veers a little too close to over the top towards the end of the episode. And so, it's Room Full of Heroes from season 9 that's my favourite of the three. Frasier is hosting a Halloween party where the guests come dressed as their heroes, and they have to answer questions as their hero as part of Frasier's game, Hallowed Heroes. One of the best things about this episode is the old man crane joke, which comes back at the end of the episode in a wonderful piece of physical comedy. I'd also like to give a few honourable mentions. I recommend the season 4 episode Ham Radio, which is based around Frasier recreating an old radio murder mystery radio play and it's one of the great all-time Frasier episodes. I'd also recommend the season 8 episode The Show Must Go Off, where Frasier and Niles visit a childhood home and begin to believe that their old landlord murdered his wife. It's a brilliant episode and I really think it works for this time of year if you're looking for spooky adjacent viewing. Ah, the 4077. MASH only had one Halloween episode, and it's a good episode. It's from season 11, and it's called Trick or Treated. This episode is set on Halloween, and the MASH 4077 is being visited by a group, a squad, a murder, of marines, who are more interested in blowing off steam and getting drunk than anything else, resulting in a few accidents that require some medical attention. This episode is good because it has some great stuff from Charles Winchester. His sarcasm is something to behold. Even though there is, strictly speaking, only one Halloween episode, I'd like to highlight two more episodes that are a perfect Halloween viewing. In the episode Follies of the Living, Concerns of the Dead from season 10, Klinger has a fever and starts to see the ghost of a newly dead soldier who can't accept that he's actually dead. It's a really good episode that fits this time of year. That said, there's another episode that I think is perfect Halloween viewing, and that is the episode Dreams from season 8. This episode is one of the best episodes of M.A.S.H. ever made. As with a lot of the truly excellent episodes of M.A.S.H., Dreams plays with the form and was written and directed by Alan Alda. During heavy casualties being sent to the 4077, the surgeon and nurses have been working for over 24 hours and are in desperate need of a nap, and sadly a nap is all they're going to get. Margaret, Hawkeye, Colonel Potter, Klinger, BJ and Charles all have a nap, and all of them have strange, and in some cases nightmarish dreams. I love this episode so much, it's chilling and surreal, and I might even do a video about this episode alone, because it's honestly an episode that everyone should see. Of course, when it comes to TV, Roseanne is truly the queen of Halloween. I just want to acknowledge before diving into these episodes that what Roseanne said on Twitter and in various interviews since was not only disappointing, but also pretty gross and racist whether that was her intention or not, and I would never excuse that. Due to her changes in political opinion and things like that over the years, I'm no longer interested in Roseanne as a person. That said, I do love the old show, and I watch these Halloween episodes every year. With the exception of the first season, Roseanne did a Halloween episode every season, and Roseanne said in an interview with Yahoo TV, for a while, they refused to let us have a Halloween episode, because they said the Bible Belt doesn't like Halloween, that they think it's satanic, so they didn't want it on ABC. And we're like, are you crazy? People trick or treat, you know? It's a big holiday. They were very kind of fundamentalist about it, but, you know, that was the first dragon we slayed on The Roseanne Show. Roseanne is another show that went all out for Halloween. 
You can really tell that these specific episodes are created by people with a genuine love for the spooky season. In another interview, Roseanne said, I always liked playing a witch, and my birthday is right after Halloween on November 3rd, so I would always carry over Halloween to my birthday. My birthday cake always had a witch on it, just because it was leftover shit from Halloween, but I liked it. The fact that many shows these days have Halloween episodes is in part due to the success of Roseanne's Halloween episodes. Out of all seven of her Halloween episodes, I watch all of them every year, but there are two that I want to highlight, which is episode seven called Boo. It's set on Halloween and features some great jokes and is just a very silly, fun, spooky episode. A theme that runs through most of the Halloween episodes is Halloween pranks, and it's always fun to see Dan and Roseanne try to one each other up. The Halloween episode from season five, called Halloween 4, is the other episode I would recommend. Becky isn't home for Halloween, and it throws Roseanne into such a funk that she loses her Halloween spirit, and so is visited by the ghosts of Halloween past, present, and future, a la A Christmas Carol. And it's so much fun. We see Roseanne at Halloween at various points in her life. Fun fact, the little girl who plays the younger Jackie is Laurie Metcalf's real-life daughter. And we see what Roseanne's life would be like if she doesn't get her Halloween spirit back. It really is like a Christmas carol for Halloween, and it's one of the best episodes, even though the prank Roseanne plays at the end of the episode is actually pretty tame. Malcolm in the Middle has two Halloween episodes. In an episode called Halloween Approximately from season two, the oldest brother Francis comes home a day late and misses Halloween, but that doesn't stop them from indulging in some hijinks. Meanwhile, Hal and Lois are obsessed with catching a driver who keeps speeding through the neighborhood. It's not a great Halloween episode in terms of, there's a severe lack of pumpkins, trick-or-treaters, and other spooky accoutrements. However, the episode, simply called Halloween from season seven, is a much better example of a true Halloween episode. It starts with the boys and Hal finding out that the house they live in was the scene of a series of grisly murders, and it freaks Hal out a lot. Malcolm is sick, and in his weakened state, is pulled into Hal's paranoia that the house is haunted. Meanwhile, Reese and Dewey take Jamie trick-or-treating and end up egging an old man's house. The old man grabs his zimmer and proceeds to slowly chase the boys all night. Any episode that has a lot of Hal is always a good episode, and watching him become more and more scared and paranoid about ghosts is just a delight. Have I saved the best for last? Maybe. I love Agatha Christie, and I'm a huge fan of the ITV series Poirot, and while I re-watch the show quite frequently, the episode Halloween Party from season 12 is an absolute must for this time of year. Based on the novel of the same name published in 1969, Halloween Party is one of the darker stories, due to the first victim that we meet is a child. Not only do we have a murder to solve, but there are pumpkins and costumes and Ariadne Oliver, who is such a fantastic character, supposedly based on Christie herself, and is played to perfection by Zoe Wanamaker. Any episode featuring her is a blast. She's got such a feisty attitude and is the perfect juxtaposition to Poirot's quiet and cerebral approach. This episode starts with a Halloween party. 13-year-old Joyce Reynolds boasts of having seen a murder a few years ago, but of course no one believes her, until she's found dead just minutes later, drowned in the apple-bobbing bucket. Ariadne, who is a crime writer, has picked up a bad cold and can't help solve the murder, so she calls her friend Poirot to come and help find the killer. I watch this episode every year. It's Poirot and pumpkins. What's not to like? And now for some honorable mentions that uh, I also watch at Halloween that are worth checking out. I want to give an honorable mention to the Paul Lind Halloween special from 1976. Matt Baum just made a video about it over on his channel and I definitely recommend you check out his video. I'll put a link to that in the description below. I'd never seen this special before and luckily it's up on YouTube. I'll also put the description below. Put the description below? No put a link to the video in the description below. 
I checked it out and I genuinely enjoyed the hell out of it. Uh, it's got Witchy Poo from HR Puff and Stuff, which, you know, is just my childhood and I love that. Uh, it also has The Wicked Witch of the West and Kiss and an all too brief appearance from Betty White. It's campy fun and it's just great to have on in the background while you carve your pumpkin, put up decorations, or just to watch as an enjoyable, campy, spooky time. There are seven Halloween episodes in the Modern Family series, and I feel like they really picked up the baton that Roseanne had put down. The writers clearly love Halloween. I take special delight in Claire being a hardcore Halloween queen. Poor Phil. Of the seven Halloween episodes, my two favourites are episode five from season four called Open House of Horror, where Phil makes an offhand comment about Claire not being very scary, and so she takes it upon herself to scare the shit out of him. I also really like episode six from season six called Halloween 3, Awesome Land. This episode features the Dunphy's new neighbours, Ronnie and Amber, played by Steve Zahn and Andrea Anders. Phil was in charge of Halloween this year and wanted to create a family-friendly Halloween by creating Awesome Land, which Claire thinks is pretty weak. The neighbours mention a competition in the neighbourhood for the scariest house, so Claire decides to take over and ruins Awesome Land to bring back Halloween. <laughs> It's a good episode, it's fun, and yeah. This animated series came out in 2014, but I only got a chance to watch it for the first time this year. I loved it so much. It's perfect autumn vibes viewing. The story, the animation style, and the music all work together so well. It is beautiful, and there's a lot more that I could say about it, but I don't want to spoil anything if you haven't seen it. But believe me, if you like Halloween and you like animation, check it out. Next up on the honourable mentions list is Bottom. The episode Terror from season 3 of Bottom was first aired in 1995, and while the style of comedy might not be for everyone, it's treated as a classic episode in my house. Set on Halloween night, we see Eddie and Richie trick-or-treating, and I swear, one year for Halloween, I'm gonna go dressed as Richie, and my husband will have to go as Eddie. So that's it. I want to say thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please gently tap the like button and then hit subscribe. If you really like this video and you'd like to help support my channel, you can buy me a coffee. I'll leave a link to my account in the description below. Have a great day, have a happy Halloween, and stay spooky.